Hello and welcome to my Let's Play RimWorld Royalty channel. I've got a new series to kick off. Um, I'm not expecting it to be super long. It's for a Reddit RimWorld contest. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how extensive it'll be. I just thought it'd be fun to record my attempt at this challenge. Um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start a new colony here, we'll stick with Crash Landed. I think I'm actually going to go with Phoebe Chillax for, for now and then I might um, change back to Cassandra later. I will go with Adventure Story. Reload. Uh, I have a seed already picked out. I'm going to go with Grid Base for you. Uh, which should give you a hint about what the challenge is and you may have seen this um, if you're a fan of the reddit communities for RimWorld. Um, this one is basically a challenge based on a grid that someone created, one of the reddit uh, community users. Um, and the challenge is that you need to create an entire base um, completely within uh, a grid format. So all of your rooms need to be the, the exact same size. Um, I'll put up a picture of the challenge so you can kind of get a, an idea, but yeah, it's pretty much as simple as it sounds. There's a grid. Um, it also specifies like where things need to be. Uh, the fridge and the butchery are in the center and then the prison and the kitchen and so on kind of expand out from there. You can expand like you, this is not like a limit um, of how many spaces you have to have, of how many rooms you have to have. So I mean obviously you may want more than one bedroom. Um, so those can tile out. But the plan is that they all need to be the same size. Um, there's also paths um, there on the original challenge. I'm not going to be doing that version. That's like the super strict way to try the challenge um, is to allow like pathing only between those certain areas. Um, I'm not going to have that. I'm just going to allow my colonists to walk freely because um, I think this will be challenging enough. So let's take a look at our map. Um, I had picked a good spot that was near the White Mountains. Oh, I found it. This is it. Marble and granite. It's got river, 50 out of 60 day growing period. Yeah, this is it right here. So it's near some um, purple. It's got a yellow and a green nearby. So that's pretty good. Not a bad spot, and it's pretty close to the road. Yeah, I like it. Stick with that choice. And let's see what we get. Um, I do have a set of colonists. Um, actually, it's it's exactly this set, um, but I, I modified them. That's funny, Mallory Bell. Yeah, that all sounds familiar. These are the same people. That's so funny. I guess because I didn't actually start it, like I didn't hit you know, I didn't go ahead, I just did the prepare carefully. Um, so this person becomes one of the colonists that I made. Pretty similar traits. Um, I just changed some of their um, backstory. I think this guy became one of my people. And this person here, Coleman. Yeah, Zoya, and I kept the name Zoya. That's interesting. Okay, let's load the preset and we'll take a look. So here they are. So obviously they've been changed. Um, some of them have similar names and or hairstyles. So we have, um, let me introduce you to my colonists here. We have Amélie Deschamps, um, who's got blue hair. She's good at plants and animals, pretty good at art, and she's a good soldier um, as well. So that'll be helpful. We've got Zoya Vasquez. She's a good soldier as well, good at building, mining, crafting, and also good at art. And then we have Leo, who is good at cooking. He's gonna be our cook. He's decent at plants and animals. And he's also good at medical, social, and intellectual. So these are our three colonists. Um, for the equipment, I've added a husky and I've added bedrolls. So I'm gonna show you something. 
here. Um, with the points, if you take away the bedrolls, you can see like I'm good, you know, like I haven't overspent my points. Um, it's just adding these few bedrolls that put me over. Oh, they changed to cloth. That's funny. They weren't cloth before. They were something else. That's weird. Maybe I didn't save it after the last change. I wonder. Uh, what did I do? Did I do bird skin? Camel hide, maybe? Let's go. Oh, camel wool. Oh, that's different. I feel like I don't remember that. Okay. Um, add. So yeah, so even with one, we're still at 12 points. It's just that having multiple bedrolls puts us over. But the reason I like to do this is because I use the soft warm beds mod. Um, and although it's fun later in the game and is more challenging, you can make sheets and whatnot, um, it does make it harder in the early game. Um, so otherwise I would be at um, you know the right point level but just because I need to add those bedrolls I've also changed the animal for a husky so let's go ahead and see what we get all right here's our map let's take a look all right I'm gonna pause similar to the map I took a peek at earlier today um, my plan is to use this big space up here. Um, I think a few things are slightly moved around, but it should still work um, as long as the terrain is still pretty consistent. Yeah, I'm not going to have any problems because, yeah, that's the thing with the grid. It's going to be, you know, um, pretty, pretty consistently spaced and I'm not sure what the rules are for like leaving a gap, but I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to leave a gap, so I'll have to check. Yeah, this looks good. Let's remove that and let's also remove the automatic home expansion area thing as well. Um, maybe we'll just settle for the night in one of these little buildings. Oh, and where's our tree? That was something too. Okay, so that won't, it shouldn't get in the way. We can still build like a power thing here if we want. All right, cool. There's our colonists. Fausto is our dog's name. That's cute, I like that. Um, who is our animal hunter? Who's gonna have the weapon? Let's do this and find out. Looks like Amelie, six and a half three and three and a half so emily is going to be our hunter she gets that zoya can have the revolver leo is going to get the knife leo with the knife in the butchery um yeah the only sad thing oh leo i didn't do your hair bummer i was going to do green hair oh i still have the character editor oh i can do green hair Wait, where's the color? Ooh, can I do this? Where's the color? Où est la couleur? No, what the? No, 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 no. How do I click away? Oh, color, color, color. Is that gonna do it? Yes. Nice, what should we do? Should we go with this? Let's go with this. All right, and then I close it. That's how that works. Okay, amazing. Okay, um, what I was saying is that, yeah, um, you guys know I really like to have my queer colonists. I mean, I made a whole series out of it, but sadly with this challenge, I figured I really needed, you know, good qualities um, as, as much as I can. Oh yeah, I left him a cannibal. This guy was naturally a cannibal and I left him a cannibal um, because one of the rooms in the grid is a corpse fridge. I've never tried that. I've never had a cannibal. So this will be my attempt at seeing how that all works. Um, how to be the worst Rimworld crime lord possible. And can I stomach that um, as a middle-aged mom? <laughs> We shall see, we shall see. But yeah, I'm disappointed that I couldn't um, 
change their sexual orientations. Although, can you add four? Can you add like a fourth? <gasps> can you? You can! I didn't know that. Maybe it's just the character editor. Maybe the um, prepare carefully doesn't allow it. Okay, I like this. Never mind. I was going to be like, I'm so sad that I can't make them gay, but I can. Yay. Uh, maybe I will make, should I make Leo gay? Sure. I can make him ace. I'll make him gay. All right. Awesome. We have our GLB again, our gay, lesbian, bisexual, just like our characters in our queer colony. Amazing. All right, let's allow everything. Get you guys set up. Make sure we get everything. Yeah, okay. And where do you guys want to spend the night? Maybe in here looks pretty good. Pretty nice. Get you to start hauling stuff so that at least it's, you know, out of the river. Because I've definitely done that before and left stuff in the river. I see we have a little bear friend, so maybe that could be a good first guy to hunt. Let's do this. We'll just put everything there. All right. Um, let's let them wander around and start to bring the stuff there and set it up. And then I will start with this massive job of planning things out. Wish me luck. Wish them luck. Wish us all luck. Okay, well, I was originally thinking of going with six by six room sizes, um, but I think that's a bit tiny, especially when you account for the walls. Um, it only leaves four by four inside. Even if you can tile them, um, it means there's just not enough space in the you know, in the ones that are close to each other. Um, so I think I might have to go eight by eight or even 10 by 10. Um, I still do have lots of space. Um, I'd also kind of like to include this original room somehow in the map um, because, you know, I don't want it to be like, oh no, you didn't go with the plan right from the start. So I'm thinking if I include this room, this room is 10 by, you know, 8 or something. So if I expand it to 10 by 10, I can start kind of tiling upward and outward. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. But this is kind of gives you an idea color wise of um, what things look like. Purple is like for bedrooms and royal stuff. Dark green is for farms, whether they're food or drugs or medication or textiles, things like that. Green is for food storage, um, storage, crafting, um, butchery, that kind of thing. Uh, light blue are the fridges, so it's one, two, three that they've started you off with. This blue is the hospital research and med storage. This blue is the kitchen and drug lab. And what's left? Oh, red. Red is the prison, the kill box, the general armory, and the scanners, mortars, uh, and landing. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go eight by eight or 10 by 10, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, I may have something here. I might have figured it out. Um, we've got a 10 by 10 uh, room grid. We had to flip it upside down, um, but this would be, according to the map, it's a royal bedroom. Um, so all these purple are bedroom and royal rooms. So um, yeah, so I think we're safe to make that a bedroom for tonight. Um, and what's nearby? Yeah, general storage is right up here. So we can make a stockpile zone to keep all the stuff. And we can ditch this one and start hauling it over there to general storage. And what we can do for now is just pop down one of these pillars and put a roof on it so that things stay protected until we can get some walls popped up. 
Um, what I like about this version, upside down version, is not only does it put a bedroom where we need to spend the night, um, it also puts two of our growing fields right on some fertile soil, which will be great until we get some um, tilled soil. Um, we can start, this one is textiles, so we can start the cotton. This one is brewable stuff, so we can start the hops. Um, where's the food one? The food one would be down here, um, but like I said, we can tile out, so we can also have food growing kind of over here between um, the, you know, the edge of the, um, the area and the river. Um, yeah, so I think this would work okay. I mean, 10 by 10 rooms are a little bigger than I had planned, but it's not too bad. And we can always, um, you know, tile out if we need more space. And then if we need less space, um, I do have the hygiene mod. So that's something that's gonna be a little tricky is to find spots for bathrooms. Um, Cause I will need bathrooms. Definitely, like the prison will need a bathroom, for example. The hospital will definitely need a bathroom. You want that to be close by. So having slightly larger rooms will allow me to kind of, you know, stick a little bathroom in the corner type thing. Um, as long as it's still, I think the rules have kind of said, as long as it's still associated with that theme of the area, you can have it in that area and you can subdivide the rooms. Like this room doesn't have to be a 10 by 10 room with no walls, no internal walls. It can have like smaller um, subdivisions. So I think that'll, that'll work out nicely. Um, so what I will do then is make this room officially a 10 by 10 room and I'll make sure to get all the storage out of there. Um, you know, just a temporary stopover point. Oh, I guess we don't need to move this one. You can stay. Um, yeah, so I think this is off to a good start. Let's see if we can maybe pick one more room to make. Maybe the kitchen or fridge, something like that, um, to get things started. And we will need to have our first power. So this yellow um, is power, so we can start making the first power here and start to connect the cables to the fridge areas where we need them. Emily has just done our first fishing. So we're gonna have to figure out where the food storage is gonna go. The only thing with doing this upside down every time is I'm going to have to flip it for now until I redo my little paper copy. Raw food storage or the fridge? Um, I guess we could put it... I don't really have a fridge yet, so I guess we could put it in raw food storage for now. So let's make a little stockpile for now. This is going to be for raw food. And it won't be refrigerated yet, but that's okay. So, Emily, you need to haul that to the right spot. Thank you. And we'll name it raw food. That would be a good place to put walls up because, you know, animals are going to want to eat the raw food, and we don't want them to do that. We should also figure out where to put our table. Where's the kitchen? The kitchen is here. Well, the table can go in the kitchen for now. Um, a lot of people do eat in their kitchens. I know I do with my family. So I think we'll do that for now. And then the dining room, rec room. Oh, actually, no, never mind. The dining room and rec room is right here, anyways. So we will just put it straight into the dining room. There we go. And this can even be added as well and it's off to a great start so that might be a good room to close in perfect we'll add some recreation to our dining room rec room i guess if we want to have people be able to stand in the room yeah maybe we'll move one of these tables there if we do it like that stand over there and do it um, and then what about a campfire do we need to put that anywhere specific I don't think so let's put it on the edge like outside of the the zones so I don't think it really has any themed 
place to belong. It's kind of recreation, but yeah, it's kind of a weird, weird one. Gonna set up our first hygiene items. I might actually keep this dividing wall. Um, if this is gonna be a royal room, it's gonna wanna have a private bathroom. So this might actually work out really well if we have like a bedroom and then a space for a private bath, um, which I might make like smaller. Um, but yeah, I think that'll actually work really nicely. Everyone's hauling stuff out of the bedroom, which is great. Perfect. Amazing. Our first room is complete. I like that. And I like this size. I think it's not too big, not too small. Um, hopefully it'll work. Got some dining room, rec room stuff started. Maybe we'll add a few chairs. Yeah, I think this is going to be really cool. I think it's a really interesting challenge. Um, I haven't really decided when I'm going to be actually posting these videos. Um, right now I'm trying to decide because I've only been posting my Queer Colony series on Sundays. I haven't been quite making my twice a week schedule that I had started with the Space Dudes series. So this might be a way to do it. I might be able to post this series on Thursdays um, and the Queer Colony on Sundays. Um, or I could just wait until the Queer Colony um, series is over and post the contest videos. Um, we'll see. Uh, obviously, if, when you're watching this, you will know whether it's um, being posted in June or whether it's coming out, you know, towards the, the end of the summer or into the fall. Uh, we shall see. I'm kind of leaning towards the option of posting it on Thursdays. So if you're seeing this on the first Thursday of June, um, that's what I'm going to try to do. You can expect to hopefully see it um, every Thursday. You will see this series and then every Sunday you will see a Queer Colony video. Um, it's been an exciting week. I actually had a new subscriber as well. So hello, bonjour, hola. Um, since I'm such a tiny channel, every little subscriber counts. Um, it's always nice to see likes and comments as well. So welcome. Looks like this will work out perfectly. They're getting the last few things. I'll push them to do a little bit more hauling before bed. I think I'll even push Leo to do a bit more building. Is he our main builder? Zoya is our main builder, so maybe I'll push Zoya after... No, you know what? You do a little little last bit of building so that we have doors and a washroom. And Leo and Amelie can do the last little bit of hauling. I think I'll consider that a success if I can have everything kind of tucked away and organized by nighttime kind of regardless of where things got you know if anything got disorganized during the day um if it's only been there for one night i don't or you know one during the the daytime i don't think i'm going to be too too strict with myself for that this is great i like this all right we're off to a good start um we'll have to come up with a name for this colony i think the base might be just you know grid base or something like this um so we'll have to think of uh, a name for Leo and Zoya and Amelie. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.